Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis, and coming up is the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of second Adar. That's right, I said second Adar. It is a leap year on God's calendar, and when there's a leap year on God's calendar, you just don't add an extra day to the month. You actually double the whole month. So in this year, 5784, it is the year of the door. So we just went through first a door, which was like walking through a door. And now we're going to walk through the second a door. So it's like a double door of a door here in 5784. And I sense the Lord wanting us to marinate in his presence because Adar is associated with joy and in his presence, the word says, is where we find fullness of joy. So let's take advantage of this time. And something else interesting to note here in the United States, we are just entering into daylight savings time where we spring ahead and we actually lose an hour. But on God's calendar, we gain a whole month. So I think it's awesome. And so I just sense the Lord just wanting us to take advantage of this time and get a double dose of Adar, a double dose, marinate in his presence. You will find fullness of joy. Enjoy the chalkboard teaching and be blessed. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we're entering into. It is the month of Adar. And Adar is the last month in God's spiritual calendar. And the word Adar means strength. And in the Bible, strength is associated with joy. So I believe the Lord is calling us to end the year strong, but not in our own striving. He's calling us to end the year strong in his joy. My name is Christine Vallis and I am blessed to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you in real time. So thank you so much for tuning in and I pray that you are blessed by this teaching. So, you know, many of us pray for strength, but what we really need is joy. <laughs> and so what is joy? I want to spend just a couple minutes laying a foundation of what joy is the biblical too definition of it. But first let's look in Webster's dictionary and it says that joy is an emotion evoked by well-being, success, or the prospect of possessing what one desires. Basically the feeling you get when everything is going your way. And the problem is, is that everything doesn't always go our way, right? So basically people are out there just trying to be happy or just fake it till you make it, right? But that doesn't work either because that only lasts as long as we last or as long as our circumstances are good, right? True joy is not based on our circumstances because they go up and down. Real joy is based on our relationship with God through Jesus and we cannot experience true joy without this relationship. So when we receive Jesus, we receive forgiveness, we have peace with God, so that is true joy, right? And if you read through the Psalms, you'll see all over the place it talks about how the king rejoices in thy salvation or restore unto me the joy of my salvation. So salvation with God brings joy. That relationship is true joy. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So if you break that verse down, God loves us. <laughs> we are the beloved of God and he's offering us eternal life, which isn't just heaven. Eternal life means knowing God here and now. We can know him. So if you've never received Jesus, today is the day of salvation, and I encourage you to do so. Because when you receive him, of course you receive this 
eternal life with God, forgiveness of sins, but also we become a new creation. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit, and that includes all of the fruit of the Spirit as listed in Galatians 5. And so you want to check that out. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So joy is not just limited to an emotion. No, biblical joy, true joy, is a fruit of the Spirit. And we have it to the full in our inner man, right? We're not going to get any more joy in our spirit than what we have now. We have it to the full. We have all the love, all the joy, all the peace in our spirit, man. And it is part of our identity in Christ. It's part of our benefits as a believer. But the question is, how do we get his joy that's within us out of us, right? So I'm just going to go through a few quick ways to get his joy to manifest in our lives. And the first thing is to get in his presence. Psalm 16 says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And that word presence in Hebrew means faces. So, you know, joy manifests when you are face to face with someone. Meeting with someone over coffee is much better than a phone call or a Zoom call. And I think many of us are really appreciating face to face meetings now more than ever. So God meets with us face to face. And Isaiah 56, 7 says, He makes us joyful in His house of prayer. And prayer is conversation with God. You know, so when we're with God in His presence is fullness of joy. And in conversation with Him, we should be joyful coming out of it, right? And so in His presence, He speaks to us. So in His Word, joy will manifest as we get in there and as His Word gets into us. Jeremiah 15, 15, 16 says, your words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. You've experienced this. If you are a believer and you're getting to God's word and you get a word from God, it, it ignites you. It's like a rhema word that speaks life, right? His words are spirit and life. It, it propels you because we are loved. We discover God is for us. We find his wisdom. And so as we get in his word, they will manifest joy in our lives. So we want to get in his word. We want to hide it in our hearts so that the enemy cannot steal it from us. And I encourage you guys to read through the book of Philippians all about joy, right? And even the book of Esther this month. And so here's another really creative way to have joy manifest in our lives. How about rejoicing, right? Well, praising God is rejoicing, giving him thanks. And what happens? We focus our attention on God's goodness instead of our circumstances. And you know, the more we acknowledge him. The more we're in his word, it changes the default setting of our heart. It's like changing the home page of our heart from despair to joy. And basically that's what Romans 12 is. We are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we won't automatically go to the normal default of, of being depressed or discouraged. As, as his word transforms us, our default shifts to joy. So joy is much stronger than we think. His joy, you know, and in God's word, it says that his word is a cure. And his word also says that rejoicing is a cure. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart does good like a medicine. So if rejoicing is a cure, why are we not rejoicing, right? It's free and there's no negative side effects. So if we are rejoicing, bad things that the enemy tries to shoot at us, they won't penetrate us. Things will just roll off us when we're rejoicing. And the enemy hates that because he wants us sick. He wants us miserable. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he is the ultimate killjoy, right? So guess what? When we are rejoicing, we are basically agreeing to what God says about us. We are saying, amen, thank you, Lord, to what you saying is true, I believe it. And that is submitting to him. And when we do, and when we continue in that, we praise him, we resist the devil. And guess what? He 
flees. So rejoicing in the Lord is one of our greatest weapons against the enemy. And I think that's why Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So our joy not only blesses us and blesses God, but our joy is a witness to the world. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world, and our joy is our light. Check it out. Proverbs 13, 9 says, The light of the righteous rejoices, so they will know us by our love, and they will know us by our joy. And you know, that goes back to Nehemiah 8, 10, that says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. But if you look at the whole context, the Jews were coming out of captivity. This was the first time they actually heard some of them uh, for the first time hearing the word of God spoken to them, declared to them. And so they received the word. They were worshiping. They were repenting. They had tears of sorrow. But it was then at that moment that Nehemiah and Ezra rose up and said, Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And they went on to say, be still, do not be grieved. And the people went their way and they rejoiced greatly because they understood the words that were declared to them. So there is a time for tears. There is a time for repentance, but not penance, not unworthiness. And the Lord doesn't want us to live in sorrow. He delights when we offer him the sacrifice of prayer. Praise. Praise is becoming to the believer. So wow, there is so much power in his joy. And so it makes sense to me that the Lord would highlight the power of his joy as we end the spiritual year. So let's be encouraged to tap in to his joy within us because it is our supernatural strength. Well, thank you for letting me lay that foundation of joy. And now we can hit the chalkboard. And first, let's look at the Hebrew letter connected to this month, which is Kuf. It's over here, and it really points to where we are. It's a picture of the back of the head, a cycle of time, a circuit. What is behind or what is Final. So again, this is the last month of the spiritual year. It's also the last month of winter. And you know, that's reason for rejoicing right there, right? So let's keep moving forward. Let's not look back. We are pressing on rejoicing in the joy of our salvation. Because if we keep looking back, we will never go forward, right? That's pretty obvious. Philippians 3.13 says, This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We want to keep our eyes on the prize. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and it's his joy that propels us onward and upward in Christ. So as we move through this month, let's pay attention as certain things may be ending in our lives and actually celebrate certain endings in our life. And you know, I don't think we do this enough, but the word actually encourages us in Ecclesiastes 7, 8, it says that the end of a matter is better than its beginning and patience is better than pride. So in other words, finishing is better than starting. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. It's so easy to start something, but not very easy to finish it, right? So we need joy to finish things. His joy, it'll be our strength. So let us not end the year in haste. Let us not rush things. Let us not move in our flesh, but let us finish in his joy and in his patience. And we have that to the full within us. It is our true nature in Christ. Now the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the constellations all point to Messiah. And this month, the constellation is Pisces right here. And it's a picture of the two fish. And it depicts the multitude of believers that were promised to Abraham, and also a depiction of Jew and Gentile coming together as one new man and Yeshua. 
So I believe that these fish also encourage us to dive down into the depths of his word, to get into that secret place, to find our supply and hidden identity in that hidden world. Colossians 3 3 says we are hidden in Christ. We are this new creation in Christ. And the word also says, as he is, so we are in this world now. <laughs> in heaven, yes, but also now. So as we dive deep, we will discover our true identity in him. And Isaiah 12 3 talks about how with joy we will draw waters from the wells of our salvation. I believe that also talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you've never received that, the Lord will not withhold any good thing from you. So you can just ask to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you will be baptized in power and praying in the Spirit. And also as we dive down, we will discover that hidden wisdom that God has for us strategies and the treasures that his word offers us and also we will discover that we are his treasure we are that pearl of great price and you know many of us may find ourselves hidden physically and so i have learned that the hidden place is not to be despised because it's truly a time of preparation and so even our daily time where we pull aside and we go into our secret place with the Lord it is preparing us for the day ahead so we go in the hidden place so that we launch out so whether it's our daily quiet time or even that longer season of consecration or concealment we are not to despise it because he is readying us to come out and to be prepared. And God loves us so much that he is preparing us so that we go out when he sends us forth. He will launch us out in his confidence, in his love, and in his wisdom. Now also, as we move forward in this month, the Lord doesn't want the giants to produce fear in us over here in the corner of the chalkboard. Second Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is the fruit of the spirit, right? So fear is a liar. That's right. Fear comes from the father of lies himself. So when fear rears its ugly head in our lives, what do we do? Well, Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. And so believing in God is knowing who he really is and discovering his true nature that he is for us and he loves us unconditionally. So his perfect love will cast out fear fear the more we get that fresh revelation and then we will rise up like David we will face Goliath and you know David he knew his God you know how much more for us we're under the new covenant we have much better promises so that we can stand in the face of any giant from a position of victory we are more than conquerors in Christ that is our true identity so when we get a fresh revelation of his great love for us and that his perfect love casts out fear guess what it also causes our fears to laugh <laughs> isn't that great I'm laughing just saying that and in Proverbs 31 25 it says that the man or woman of God is clothed in dignity and strength and she can laugh or he can laugh and smile at the future so how is that possible it's not just by laughing things off in life no but it's taking God at his word yeah, it's putting everything in the context of being the beloved of God. Yeah, that, you know, you are realizing that you have a hope and a future in him, that all of the blessings of God are yes and amen, and that the curse has been reversed over your life. You now have peace with God. And so... Now, when a giant comes our way or when lies come our way, we're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't you know that I'm God's favorite? That should be our attitude. And so joy arises in our heart. Confidence arises. Our authority in who we are in Christ arises. And we begin to laugh in the enemy's face. 
And we begin to laugh at the future because we know that God loves us so much. So if you haven't guessed it, laughter is the action connected with this month. As we mentioned earlier, Proverbs 17, 22, laughter is good medicine. Even science proves that, right? And so religion paints this false picture of God being boring. And some churches may be, some Christians may be, right? <laughs> but God is not. How do we know that? Well, Hebrews 1, 9 says that Jesus had more joy than all of his companions. And Jesus is a perfect representation of God himself. The Lord is joyful and we are made in his image to be joyful, to have a merry heart. And that gives us liberty and freedom to laugh. And that's just fun. I can laugh right now again. So not is he only encouraging us to laugh, but he's encouraging us to leap for joy like Naphtali. That is the tribe connected to this month. And Jacob's blessing over Naphtali was this, he will be a doe let loose and he will bring forth beautiful words. So Naphtali was blessed with a gift of communication through movement and through words. So if you look through the Bible, you'll see Naphtali was known for their speed and agility. They were swift on their feet like hind's feet. They were quick to run their troops into battle. Psalm 18 depicts this beautifully. For by you, Lord, I can run over a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. It's my God who girds me with strength, which is joy. He makes my way blameless. He makes my feet like hind's feet. And he sets me on high places. That is our true position in him. And Naphtali was more than just a tribe, but they were a dancing troop. They were a doe let loose, a prisoner set free, that they were free to dance and worship. So in this month, you may consider exploring new ways of expressing your love and worship to God, even in dance. I'm telling you, our praise confounds the enemy. All right, now Naphtali also encourages us to be swift to speak forth beautiful words. And I had to bring this up as God just gave me such great revelation on this part of the month and how he wants to encourage us because it's interesting to note that in 2020, we entered the biblical year, the biblical decade, 5780. And that is a decade of declaration connected with the Hebrew letter pay, which is connected to our mouth. So we've been learning how life and death are in the power of our tongue. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever we put in is going to come out. And so as we began the decade of declaration in this month of Adar, the month connected with the mouth, connected with communication, that virus hit. And what happened? Masks were introduced, right? And if you ask me, masks steal joy. Zoom calls zoomed, social media soared, and online platforms exploded, right? And they continue to do so. And now here we are in Adar, our words are being censored. <laughs> so what do we do, right? What then shall we say? Well, I just couldn't help but think about the book of Acts and Peter and John. Check it out. This was after they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They healed a lame man, right? And by the way, he went forth leaping and rejoicing, okay? And thousands of people believed they received the Holy Spirit. And then what happened? The high priest put them in jail. And they asked them, what power is this that you do this? By what name do you do this in? And they saw that they were bold, but they were uneducated. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And they had to release them because they couldn't deny that the man was healed. And the crowds were just full of joy. But this is what they told Peter and John. They commanded them not to speak and not to teach any more in that name of Jesus. And what did Peter and John say? They said, we can't but speak about Jesus. And so that should be our response. 
Their persecution did not stop them, but it ignited them. And they prayed for more boldness. And guess what? They received it. They received great power and great grace to share the gospel and to go forth with signs and wonders. So keep yourself in the word. Keep speaking. Keep teaching. Keep asking for boldness and you will receive it. And you will receive great power and great grace to do so in season and out. I am so encouraged by that and I pray you are too. And I also think that Isaiah 52 encapsules what the Lord wants to exhort to us. And it says this, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring forth good tidings of great joy, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. That is awesome encouragement from the Lord. So lastly, in this month of Adar, there is an appointed time. It is the Feast of Purim. And I encourage you guys to read through the book of Esther. The Feast of Purim is all in there. You can check it out. It is a must read for such a time as this. And as you read through Esther and even you know look at the Feast of Purim, you will see that all the characteristics really of Adar this month are really embedded in the book of Esther and the Feast of Purim. So just briefly, Esther was hidden in a secret place for a season and then she was appointed Queen of Persia. And when a death sentence fell upon the Jews of the land, she again went into that hidden place with the Lord and she received war strategies. And then she was obedient and she let forth in faith. She approached the king and she spoke forth beautiful words and she revealed her true identity. And God used her to deliver his people. And the curse was reversed. His decree was final. The Jews were not destroyed, but they defended themselves. They stood up against the giants and they were victorious and they survived and they thrived even to this day. So poor actually commemorates this amazing defeat of the enemy. Death is swallowed up in the victory of God ultimately through Christ and that is reason to celebrate. So in closing, the enemy, we can expect him. He wants us to end the year in defeat, but we're smarter than that, right? The truth is that our future is bright because the joy of the Lord is our strength. So Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you that you are for us, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that every weapon that comes against us, every word we shall condemn. So Lord, thank you that your decree over our lives is final and you do have a hope and a future for us. And God, thank you that you rejoice over us with singing and that we are the joy that was set before you. So let us wake up to that true reality and let's end the year strong in his joy. Let us keep our eyes on Jesus, rejoicing in his love, and we will run in his joy as we cross over the finish line of this spiritual year and we will go out with joy and be led forth with peace, even Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Prince of Peace himself. Thank you for listening and go forth in his joy and in his love.